Let's, um, as we wrap up, let's talk a little bit about pensions and the, uh, uh, certainly Europe. Um, there seems to be a massive, well, well, there are three, let me start by framing it, but saying that, that what we're entering into, and I think you've said this, is the age mm. of volatility. Yeah. Um, just talk a little bit about the age of volatility. For well, me. partly, what asset prices have risen with a complete disconnect to the physical economy. If you look at the American S&P 500, it fell down to about 666. That was literally its minimum value. <laughs> okay. I know, I know. It's now about 2,000, okay, in that region. So if tr the S&P has trebled over about a, a four-year period, five-year period. Yeah. The economy has not trebled. Yeah. And the, uh, Schiller's uh, the lagging price to earnings ratio, uh, it is overvalued. And it's been sustained largely by QE because QE, basically when QE puts money in the hands of people who can only spend it buying financial assets and, and raking off fees, of course, but when they buy something, they're buying financial assets. Uh, and that, that inflation is still there. Now, with QE going, and that is ending, then a major source of demand that gives the banks cash that they'd rather have in income earning assets, therefore they buy shares, isn't going to be there anymore. So that's one element of additional volatility. The other is we're having geared the private sector debt levels up so high it's not going to rise anywhere near as much. This is an interesting point of distinction with China, by the way. Apparently, I've got to check the data, but apparently mortgage debt in China has increased by a factor of four over the last couple of years as people have piled into the stock market. English, American margin debt is back to pretty close to the peaks it reached in 2000 and 2007. It's not going to get much higher. So the capacity to lever up the system isn't there. The capacity of people get out of the system in a panic moment at various times is much higher. So I think we're going to see up fall to up fall to up fall to type behaviour by the stock market. And of course, when the hat goes on for long enough, then that further encourages people to de-lever. And that's the age of volatility. That's the kind of crux, if that's you like. That's the key one, yeah. Well, if you wanted to do, talk about it in terms of the mathematics of complex systems, we've reached that point between stability and disorder. And we're going to keep on bouncing down into you know, mini crashes all the time. And is this the champagne economy idea, the secular stagnation, this idea that you have the bubble drop, bubble drop, or however it's been justified in the Well, no, that, that's the, this is where, I mean, you see the stuff being argued by Summers and Co about secular stagnation. Yeah. The one element of that which is correct is there's a demographic slowdown. So you've taken out one of the two factors that give you a growing level of yeah. GDP, the other being technical change. The argument that there's less successful technologies out there to move into it, I think, is nonsense. Yeah. Okay. The real thing is we've, not, we've reached peak debt level, and you, you, a growing economy needs a certain amount of additional debt because that gives you additional money and additional demand. When you've reached the peak level, you're not going to get that level of growth of debt anymore. So the contribution that comes from credit to growth is not going to be there. That's where the sex stagnation is coming from, not anything secular. So let's pick up the demographic uh, element of this because a lot of uh, shortfalls within pensions surely mm. further add to the volatility. That's yeah. Going. If you, if you, give me a figure. If you were to mark, uh, if interest rates were, were going to go up, so because basically pensions have been uh, worked out uh, on, on on interest rates which were set at a certain level. Mm, yeah. Uh, they're not there now. No. Those interest rates. And the returns are going to be there either in general. Yeah. Right. So if you were to mark pensions to market today. What would be the size of the shortfall? Oh, God. I mean, it's an impossible question. It's an impossible question, but it's got to be something in the tens of percent levels. Is it? I'd say so, because again, as you say, people have factored in this rule, the 4% rule. You take 4% of your principal every year and you'll be able to say survive for 30 years. Um, that was worked out at a time when there had been some serious stock market crashes as well in the past. And, you know, the 87 bubble disappearing and so on. But I think we're not going to... A 4% rate of return? Unlikely. 1%, if you're lucky maybe over the very long term. And at that level, then a lot of pensions aren't going to work. That's significant, isn't it? Hmm. Yeah, I mean, we, we have factored in, again, this is what happens when you work in a complex system. You, you factor in the past trend, but it gives you no guide to what's going to happen in the future. And again, because our thinking about the economy has left out the role of credit and it plays such an essential role, when we've reached peak credit, we're not going to see the level of growth that we got as we approached the peak beforehand. And consequently, those returns aren't going to be there. Advice? <laughs> Hedge yourself against volatility. But uh, the real advice I give is we have to reduce the level of private debt directly by government action. 
use the capacity of the state to create money to cancel private debt in a way that doesn't disadvantage savers, like call a modern debt jubilee, and reset the system again. But we, we are highly unlikely to do that. The one country which might do that, interesting, I think, is China. Really? Because they could decide to give it a try. Yeah. And are they thinking like that? I don't know. Uh, but I know there are people in China who are aware of those ideas. And if they do it, they've got the capacity, they've, 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 the financial strength the government has to do something like that to the stage where it's trusted by the people when they do it is much, much higher than we've got in America or there in England. Be, there might be statues of Steve Keen in, uh, in various uh, That's Chinese. a dangerous thing to say to somebody, mate, in China. I've seen a few of them topple at various times. So I did see there's amazing statues of Mao everywhere when I was Just there Make last sure those models are right, mate. Indeed. <laughs>